بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Today I have an interesting topic I want to talk about the link between the Mahdi and Khurasan and I will talk about some aspects of Khurasan even though I will not be talking about one of the most important aspects of Khurasan which is the old map of Khurasan, the bigger map, the bigger Khurasan which used to be called khurasan e the Khurasan, the greater Khurasan. You know how uh, India is trying to make a greater India and Israel is trying to make a greater Israel. Well, and, and the NATO forces are trying to become a bigger European country. Well, there used to be uh, Khurasan is not uh, just this small area. Uh, it is. It used to be quite a large area, but I'm not going to be talking about the map of Khurasan today. What I am going to be talking about is the link between Khurasan and the Mahdi and some aspects that relate to that specifically. So let us go on to the first tradition of the Prophet ﷺ in this case. But over here I want to give you a fundamental rule. The fundamental rule is that we know that shaitan tries to interfere and change things. Like, let me give you an example. Kustuntunia, uh, which is the word the Prophet used for Kustuntunia. Uh, today it is called is Istanbul, Istanbul, then from Istanbul to Istanbul. Okay. So, in the same way, Shaitan tries to interject and change things here and there. Okay. Especially in things that relate to his agenda. Because he's your enemy. And he knows where to attack the Hadith literature. Quran can't be attacked. But the Hadith literature can be attacked. And small changes in Hadith literature have to be, that's why Hadith literature, especially when it comes to Islamic eschatology, has to be weighed in the presence of Al-Furqan, which is the Quran. Okay. So a lot of things have been, uh, you can say, Shaitan has attacked specific things that, uh, and one day I will talk about this, but right now I'm just giving you the point, the basic point, that Shaitan has attacked those things that he knows or it knows that will be its to its benefit in the long term of hurting Islam and leading people astray, which is his goal. So having said that, when we look at these traditions of the Prophet ﷺ that link Khurasan with the Mahdi, as you'll see, we compare this with the Qur'an, okay? So I want to share with you some interesting things regarding this, which will be maybe surprising for some of us. The Prophet said ﷺ, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And this is, who's the narrator? The narrator is Thawban He's like one of those companions that talks about, uh, you know, the tayyurat, or the, you know, the ayyam Allah, the, ch- the days of Allah, how the days of Allah, how the world changes, okay? And uh, like Hudayfa bin Yaman, for example, Abu Hanan radiallahu anh, also many narrations from that perspective of how things are going to change and how days change. And so, Thawban radiallahu anh, qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمْ رَايَاتُ sud When you see the black flags. What is the significance of mentioning black flags? The significance of mentioning the black flags is the Prophet ﷺ had two flags. He had a white flag. He had a black flag. The white flag was for, this, for the nation, for the ummah. The Islamic flag, okay, is the white flag. And that is the flag with which he entered Fatul Makkah. When he entered Makkah and liberated Makkah from the idols and from everything, and that was the white flag. But when the Prophet ﷺ and the companions of the Prophet, they would go out for jihad, they would have a black flag. So the black flag is the symbol of jihad, fi sabirullah. And the white flag is the symbol of the Islamic State. So when the Prophet is saying black flags, he is saying this will be a flag of jihad, a true flag of jihad. Okay, so 
This is the significance of saying the black flag. So, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمْ When you see, when you all see, رَأَيْتُمْ رَأَيَاتُ السُّودِ When you see the black flags, the Prophet said, قَدْ جَاءَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِ الْخُرَسَانِ That will come from the direction of Khurasan. Now, over here is why you will have to keep the entire bigger picture of Khurasan in mind. Khurasan al Buzurg, which is behind the mountains of Iran. Fatuha then come to them, meaning what? It could have two meanings. One meaning could be that when their when their troops come to you, then you come out to honor them. Fatuha come to it. Okay, as they're entering, you accept them, you honor them, you help them and support them once they've come to you. The other is go out to them. Fatuha go to them, help them. Become part of them. Okay. فَأْتُوهَا فَإِنَّ فِيهَا For indeed in it will be خَلِيفَةُ اللَّهِ الْمَحْدِي In it will be the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now will the Khalifa Mahdi be in it from the beginning? Or will this be moving in the direction to help the Mahdi? And then the Mahdi will go and free uh, Turkey, the modern day Turkey as we know from the those of you that are familiar with the narrations, I don't have to repeat right now. But those of you that are not familiar, the Mahdi is going to have a conquest against uh, the occupiers of Turkey, you can say. But anyway, the point being that the Prophet said, when the army from, Khur from the direction of Khorasan come to you, then support them and help them and to honor them, because in it will be the Mahdi. Mahdi may be in the beginning or in the middle or in the end of this journey of this large, powerful army. Okay. The second narration in this regard that is less authentic. Okay. Now, in Hadith literature, let me tell you something. Hadith Ahad is considered a single narration. Okay, of three or more. Ahad is three narrations or less that is considered weak. Okay, so I'm not taking the same narration. I'm taking three different narrations on the same subject, which makes it relatively authentic because only one of the three is weak. Okay, and the other two are not that weak. This one is the weakest of them all, but you'll see the narrator of this is Ibn Shahab Zuhri. Ibn Shahab Zuhri is also one of the main narrators of even Nu'im bin Hamad's Kitab al Fitan. So, a lot of people like Zuhri, a lot of people don't like him. Uh, there's a lot of Tino Qal regarding Zuhri. Uh, but I think, you know, like anything, there is positives and negatives in the way that he narrated traditions. So, anyway, uh, he narrates on behalf of. Abu Hurairah radiyallahu an qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takhruju min khurasani rayat al-sud there will be black flags that come out from khurasan la yurduha shay'un nothing is going to stop them from reaching their goal hatta until tunsiba bil ilya ilya is another one of those words that have been changed by shaytan it's called Jerusalem today it is called Aliyah in the Hadith literature. Hada Hadith un Gharib. This Hadith, this particular na narration is Gharib, meaning it's not very, uh, it doesn't mean it's not true, it just means it's hard to certify it's true. But when you put it together with other narrations of Khurasan, it seems to be very true. Okay? Now, let's look at this tradition of the Prophet. And remember what I said. We have to measure everything from the Qur'an. So then I have to ask, does the Qur'an mention Khurasan? So this, along with other tafsirs, but this narration will help shed light in this. This hadith is the, the Musnad of Imam Ahmad and Abi Abu Huraira, uh, uh, sorry, and Bureyda. 
قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول now this hadith is interesting because this is not on this is not on behalf of someone this is سمعت I myself heard this okay ستكون بعدي بعوث كثيرة the prophet after me there will be many armies that are going to go in different directions فَتَكُونُ فِي بَعْثِ الْخُرَسَانِ Be in the army that goes towards Khurasan. ثُمَّ أُنزِلُ الْمَدِينَةُ الْمَرْوَى Marwa or Marru or Marru, one of these. The wow in Arabic can become a e u, particularly over time. So Marwa, Marri, Marru, like this. Okay, so keep this in mind. So be then if you find the city of Marwa, that's where you should stop. Because it was built by Dhulqarnain. And he did dua for it. And then he says, The people of it will not be touched with any harm. Okay, No evil can come upon the people who live in this city. So, I took it upon myself to give you a list of all the cities of the world that start with M. And uh, so, we know that Zulqarnain went in the direction of Khurasan. This is, again, you have to watch maybe my other videos on the different journeys, the three different the journey where he took, where Lam Yajid, uh, they didn't find Sitr, the Satr there. They didn't find anything. It was too hot. And there was no plants and no trees. Okay. This is in the direction of Afghanistan, going from the uh, from the Mid Empire or the Cyrus's great empire. This is the place of near Khorasan. Okay. This is also established by the fact that you will see. So here are all the cities in the world that start with M, right? And uh, so now one possible city is Marwu, which is in Pakistan, okay, in this area, kind of a little bit away from Afghanistan, but this is the least possible of the possibles, okay? The other is also in, uh, is in Turkmenistan near Afghanistan. So this is just near Afghanistan, this area where we're pretty sure that uh, this is the place, one of the places that at least the empire of Zulqarnain had an influence over. Okay, So this is also one of those ancient uh, cities. Okay, And it's a desert as described also in the Quran. Okay, And then we have a muddy which is also near Afghanistan, but Mari is probably not going to be uh, fit, but its name is similar, and that's why I'm only showing this, but Mari will not fit because it has snow, okay? And clearly the place where, Khurasa, where the Zulqar name was, it was a place that was a desert that had no shelter from or one of the places, one of his journeys was to a place of desert with no... And over here, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that one of the cities that he con he built and he conquered, and there's need, need for more research, maybe by one of you, to see which city this could be and which of these cities maybe Cyrus the Great built or his you know, people built. Uh, as you know, he was a builder. As we know, he built the wall. And so the Hadith literature is also correct from that perspective. So now let us go back to the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ in this regard. Okay, he said, be in the army of Khorasan because over in one of the cities there, the Mar Marwa, فَإِنَّ بَنَا Marwa. Now the name, of course, over time can change. That's something we have to consider. So it's not anything we can be 100% sure about, no matter how much research is done. فَإِنَّهُ بَنَاهَا ذُلْقَرْنَيْنِ ذُلْقَرْنَيْنِ Built it. وَدَعَا لَهَا And he made dua for it. بِالْبَرَكَةِ لَا يَدُّرُوا أَحْلُهَا سُوءٍ 
its people will not be harmed by any evil. But the point here is, the major point is Khorasan. And so what is the link between uh, Khorasan and Mahdi and Dhul uh, So Dhul was a man of power and he built the city. And so now he did dua and somehow those, you can say that quality of power is now transferred into one of these cities because clearly Dhul was in Khorasan. How is he going to build a city in Khorasan without being in Khorasan? So Khorasan is like one of those places he went to and it has that quality or the barakas of his du'as that also from there the army of the Mahdi will rise and then also go all the way down to Jerusalem and nothing will stop it. And it will also have instead of Zulqarnayn who will be the conqueror of the east and the west. And like Zulqarnayn the Mahdi will not be sitting in palaces. He'll be in the front of the army. He will be telling people he will be leading people in the front lines, right? And he'll be joining nations and joining people just like Dhul Qarnayn did. Of course, this is a longer topic I've had uh, talked about in other places, but I think uh, you can now see the link between Khorasan, the Mahdi, and uh, Dhul Qarnayn. Okay? أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات نعم الله